A special thank you to Krabby Terror 8, Silent Storm 00, Rex Perry, and all my patrons so far. Hello friends, I'm Big Stewie Grin. My wife and I have been playing a lot of Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. As soon as I got hooked, my mind went straight to making videos. I'm not an expert at the game yet, but hopefully videos like these will provide information to somebody considering the game or just beginning. Jaws of the Lion, along with the original Gloomhaven, are legacy games, where your actions open up new cards, and therefore a lot of content is initially hidden from view. I don't want to ruin that experience, so I'm listing what I'm going to talk about, and what I'm not going to spoil. I'm not getting into enemies or scenarios. There's a big mystery packet of cards for characters once they hit level 5. These class videos will stop at level 4. Since the A and B cards are for the tutorial period of the game, I'm not going to talk about those. There will be spoilers for the first selection of shop items. These are videos about the classes in Jaws of the Lion, and are not how to play guides. Check out Watch It Played's channel for great videos on how to play, if that's what you're looking for. Valrath Redguard. Though their demon-like qualities make them feared by many, Valraths are, for the most part, well-mannered and gentle, preferring to solve problems through diplomacy rather than violence. They come from a dark and bloody heritage of genocide and warfare, and, as they have become more civilized, have simply made concerted efforts to put the past behind them. Valraths pride themselves on being able to integrate themselves peacefully into human society, often becoming wealthy merchants or influential politicians. Not every Valrath can be peaceful, however. There is a specific caste in the Valrath capital of Jinda, tasked with protecting the city. It is a prestigious position and not one easily lived up to. Outcast from Jinda for unknown crimes, the Red Guard found it too difficult to part from their identity as a protector, keeping the distinctive red armor, as well as their chained sickle and shield. The only place to find work was as a mercenary in Gloomhaven, and maybe, just maybe, by standing on the front lines and keeping their allies from harm. The Red Guard will find some way to redeem themselves, not in the eyes of the Jinda culture, which has permanently turned its back, but at least within their own esteem. Redguard is the first character I've spent major time with in Jaws of the Lion. With his high HP, shield cards, enemy manipulation, and great level 1 healing card, he is the tank of the group. Among his level 1 and X cards, he has 5 cards with an initiative of 20 or below, and 2 cards with an initiative of 80 or above. He's a very fast character from a turn order perspective, but can't always go last when desired. His primary magic elements are fire and light. He has 5 cards that infuse fire, to 7 cards that consume fire. For light, he has 8 cards that infuse it, and 6 that consume it. Red guards can also infuse dark, wind, and earth. His fire focus provides some synergy with the demolitionist class. For attacks, he is primarily a melee character, but has a good selection of ranged attacks as well, so he isn't as inflexible as you might think a tank would be. Counting levels X through 4, he has 11 melee attack options and 6 ranged ones. As one would think with a class with chained sickles as weapons, he has a ton of pools in his arsenal, as well as a decent amount of negative status effects. Let's talk about his 3 most defining cards, in my opinion. Healing Sands has a great healing option with experience tacked on as a bonus. The bottom is also great when you want to wade into groups of enemies. The initiative isn't great, at least for the move option, so I'd save a low initiative card to pair with it. The second card is Flame Shroud. The top is an active ability. The next 5 times an enemy enters a hex next to you, it suffers 2 damage. If you can proc it 4 times, you get 2 total XP, and as a bonus you infuse fire. This is great with Fire Guard's many pulls, as long as you don't move to close the distance, you deal the damage. It's good against swarms and smaller enemies, and gets through shield. A similar premise is found on the card Shield Spikes. Each time something attacks you, the enemy suffers damage equal to your shield value. This card is more involved than Flame Shroud, requiring you to set up shields and take damage to use it. Fire Guards have a few shield cards, you can gain shield from items, and the Void Warder can give you shields as well. The big combo of shield spikes is the bottom from the shield of the desert, which gives you shield 3. I'd recommend running either shield spikes or flame shroud. Running out of time is a common way to lose scenarios, and too many active lost cards really speed the clock against you. A weakness of the fire guard is movement. His best move cards are lost after use. He only has two jump cards out of his X through 4 set, and one of those is lost after use. 
He has a couple of attack 4 cards and some attack 3 cards. Maybe it's biased because I play with the Hatchet, who is an absolute cannon, but he's not the biggest damage dealer in the world. If you want to blow up a high HP target, Precision Strike is his best bet other than a big turn with Shield Spikes. Of course, it makes sense that the tank class shouldn't deal the most damage compared to other classes. In the shop, there are several items to help the fire guard out. Iron Helmet is a great insurance policy against bad luck. Weathered Boots is cheap and helps with one of Red Guard's weaknesses. Chain Armor and Studded Leather are both nice. It really comes up to preference. Chain Armor is best against mobs of enemies, and Studded Leather can immensely help against one big swing. Stamina Potion is always a good choice. Of the hand items, I chose the Poison Dagger for my first campaign to help my teammate kill off big enemies. Heater Shield is okay for Shield Spikes builds. Honestly, all the items in the shop are pretty good. I'll be honest, I'm still in the process of evaluating perk choices. For Red Guard, I like the Remove 2 minus 1 cards perk, and the Plus 1 Add Fire and Light card. I think the Remove 4 plus 0 cards perk will be really good in the end of campaigns, after you've taken several other perks. I wouldn't start by taking that perk, just because plus 0 isn't terrible compared to all the negative cards you start out with. Let me know if you have suggestions for perks as well. Like with items, you have a choice between a lot of good options, and therefore can't go horribly wrong. I don't want to go over every single card in these overview videos, so I'm going to pick a few from each level. From level 1, Desert Knight is a nice utility attack card, but does need initiative help. The move bottom is good for emergencies. I'm always worried that I play too many cards that are lost, but sometimes you just need to move far. Shocking Advance is solid. Use the bottom half as one of his better move cards. Blinding Sickle is similar to Desert Knight. Bottom half makes it very versatile. From level X, Precision Strike is one of his best single target attack cards. Just try to give a high HP target a negative condition and have fire available. At level 2, I like Harvest Sickle for some straightforward damage, although Barbaric Instinct's top half can combo nicely with either Flame Shroud or Shield Spikes. Level 3 brings one of his best move cards in Strangling Chain, and its top is great with higher player counts. Level 4 has a couple excellent cards in Radiant Sickle and Burn Away the Dark. Burn has a great bottom half, fixing elements and adding Disarm to boot. Radiant Sickle has two great halves. The top is an above average ranged attack with a cool splash effect with a light infusion bonus. Red Guard has a few heals in his arsenal. Radiant Sickles has a good utility as it adds a move to a heal. As far as deck building goes, I'll give some pointers from my experience with the Red Guard. I think you should go with either Flame Shroud and Pulls, or Shield Spikes and cards that give shield. Don't go too heavy on cards that are lost when used, and make sure you have good move cards. The good part about deck building in this game is that you can change your deck in between scenarios to either suit the next challenge, or make changes based on what goes right and wrong in previous scenarios. Always be willing to experiment. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll be working on overviews for each class, and on Twitch, I'm going to start a campaign with the Demolitionist and Void Warden. If you have a time preference for those, I'd love to know, as I'm still experimenting with stream times. Otherwise, I'll import the VODs here for easy watching. I'm Big Stupid Grin, and until next time, have a good one.